we got Port and Hawthorne now. We have, uh... <laughs> yeah. Hopefully this one's good. Oh, yeah, who's play one? That's uh, Port Adelaide for this game. So, hopefully things can be a bit different for us. Um, I mean, if you're watching this one on the YouTubes before the other one, um, you know, in a way, you know, it's great. Go watch the other video. I'm not going to tell you to not watch another video. Watch the other video. <laughs> but, um, where we've come from, the other game that we just had, that we just came from, not the most exciting in terms of results, but it did actually feel really amazing. Um, it, it was very calming. It's a poor kick. And... Oh, damn. Like a cake of soap. There is a value in it in terms of having a moment where you know you have, like, no one watching you. That's not how it is now. But it was how it was for the other game. And it actually felt really good. It's just sort of be talking about things that were on my mind. And I didn't feel any external pressure from it. That is something that I, that I will think about afterwards through these coming days and probably for a while about how good it felt to sort of just be on the topics that I want that I felt going on in my mind and moving from that I was talking about um, I was talking about that the authenticity of like doing the thing that you want to do but then you also have to understand that that's not how you get long term like sustainability how sustainability is always more likely to come from those around you like if those around you like what you're doing and they find it valuable you're always going to have sustainability but doing the thing that you want to do um how that's always a lot less consistent so it's like it's sort of why we do the things that we think everyone around us wants from us because it's They're more consistent nowhere, with we'll history to be sustainable, you know, to, be, to get to a, like a normality from it. Um, oh, I literally just, because I was going to talk way. about something Walker, on that very thing in terms of while I was playing the other game, but I never fully got around to it. And I was mentioning this podcast that Tim Poole had, and he had Destiny and a couple it. others on it. Um... Now we're talking Can about something. It, it, was it with authenticity? It. Was it with it's not a gimme goal, how it's, it's about what other people care about? Oh my god! What exactly was it? They like it behind the goal. Did I? Okay, so Port have play one privilege. This is exactly what they were um, in the match. Much more powerful than white foul. privilege ever will be. It's play one privilege so in the you AFL 23. Most powerful thing I've ever seen. Gets the kick away. Um, although at times actually it does get broken. It does get broken at times actually. Um, God, what was it? Hopefully I can remember it. Because it's kind of where my mind was at. It's uh, get rid of that. Oh, where's that? <laughs> um, Mm. Is there something else I can think of to talk about other than, um, was it authenticity? Because I was talking about what other people care about and stuff. Oh, I know what it was now. Right, because an example was brought up by the other guy that was there. I still don't remember what his name was. But he was talking about him and his friends and how, like, they'll do, like, bully each other. Just to try and like get people to like, well, fit in. So it's like, oh well, you have like, you have like your your standards, and you like, you, whatever you look at it as like bullying, teasing, whatever. So then it's like, stop acting the way you do, and you can look at it and say it's like, oh, we're doing it like the good things and stuff. Whatever your reason for thinking it's good or bad or whatever, that's sort of irrelevant right now in my mind. It's like looking at that and saying, okay, so people, it's like. People, like, bullying each other. That's the words that he was using. I'm using the words he said. Um, like, bullying each other to try and, like, stop acting in the way that they don't like. That's, like, 
Um, come with Rosie. That's close. It's like I'm using words he's saying, but I'm also paraphrasing my own words and my own understandings. But it's like taking from that and seeing it's like okay, no, that's with four form. Um, and that's Amon. So he kicks it out there. And it was. Where exactly was I going with it? Because I know that like it was talk, it was mentioned about um, like how in schools and how people are being are being taught of like physical bullying, like physical um, handling of actions, like it's being wrong and stuff. And then it was like it was brought up by them. It was also going through my mind of like okay, but it doesn't necessarily stop like people having a power dynamic necessarily and trying to have like that power grab and stuff or whatever in terms of okay well if you're not gonna like be able to physically can't use physical force to try and change people to say this is a bad thing then where do you go from that you go through like mental tactics you go through emotional tactics you know when trying to sort of because that's that is sort of how it works and i understand that like the lights camera action that's a term that i know i came up with i never heard someone else mention Lights, camera, action in terms of um, lights is emotion, uh, camera is thought, and then action is the physical stuff in terms of how we ultimately function and what's like the most important. So it's like you have to like you have the emotional part to it, the, the whatever emotions that are needed in that, and then you have like the thoughts, which is like the strategic thinking of the an the, ana the, anal the analyzing of the situation, and then you perform the action. So it goes from lights to camera to action, right? Um, but yeah, so like uh, the physical stuff tends to be the easiest to understand. It's like the least, it's the stuff we get, it's the thing that's the most visibly obvious. So it tends to be the easiest to understand and want to perform. Um, and then from there, because it's like the furthest part, it's like in an onion, it's the, it's the most external layer, so it's the easiest to understand. Then you go towards, then you work backwards from there, with the mental and then the emotional. So, if like physical abuse, physical bullying is bad and we consider it bad, you don't actually, and you're like, oh, stop doing that stuff. You could maybe get people to stop doing those actions, but you don't stop them from wanting, like, what was the, what was the reason that those actions were taking place? Like, you can say the actions were bad, but what were the reasons those actions were taking place? So if you take away the actual act, you, okay, fine, you take away the act, but you don't take away the reasons it was happening. So, the desire to want to, like, bully someone else, whether it's kids, adults, whatever, that's still remaining. So then, if you're not going through the physical part, you're then moving on to a deeper layer in order to get to that other person. You know what I mean from that? Does that make sense? I, in my mind, that makes sense. And it's sort of why, when we look at something, for example, like bullying, we see with the with the boys and the men, it's like, oh, the physical stuff that's going on, in terms of, like, what we're able to do, because men, um, at least in terms of the traditional understanding of men, are physically stronger. So they're able to sort of feel, it's sort of like, oh, well, I can just try and rely on that part, because that's, what's, that's what I got. We're like, girls growing up have to sort of realize they're not as physically strong so that's not where they're getting their power dynamic they're going to be getting it elsewhere um, and that comes from the mental the emotional so that would be a quote-unquote feminized approach to bullying right so if you're taking away the physical approach for the guys then they move towards where the women were where the abuse that's being put on to other people is going to be much more emotional in nature like it's going to be much more long term I think and harder to pinpoint I think that's how that would work um, go down there little kicks it's like if you really like the bullying as an example if you really want to get rid of bullying um, you have to be willing to go deeper than just surface level in terms of what you're trying to stop 
you know, you have to stop the ability of people wanting to have like a power dynamic on others and have people fit to fin a, a whatever, because it's like the reason that you pick on people is because they're like a little weird, maybe you're like they're a little bit different and it's like a power play. That's pretty much my understanding that seems to make that's like a it's like a soft understand like surface level understanding i think um maybe it's a bit deeper but i think it at least makes sense it sounds right to me at the moment um so you go and do that and you're like okay well we need to stop that for the kids but like if you really wanted to stop that it'll take a lot of time and effort um and you have to instead of being like oh stop doing these actions it's not the actions it's the desire it's where it's the desires that the actions come from it's like what are the motivating factors that cause people to want to do that you have to like you have to really go deep into those right and like yes there are like because i'm using the example of bullying um yes there are like bullying organizations that i'm sure probably do this because i don't i don't really go into looking at like bully organizations don't be a bully be a star stuff you know like those campaigns and look at all that other stuff but is it really valuable like how much time are like is a school going to go into stopping the motivations from the bully you know like they got they got their own like it's easy it's um it's a hot oh no get rid of that um and a little kick towards full forward yeah has it on the last line of defense sometimes i was mentioning it in the other game but sometimes you know, i was kind of forgetting that like my collarbone shoulder stuff is like in pain <laughs> until i like i i took a i a deeper inhale and then it went ow um but yeah they can actually i don't know how much incentive there is um and how much effort that like adults want to put into like as an example the children stop bullying each other because like what's like because it's like stop being a bully oh well what if what if i keep bullying what are you going to do we're going to put like discipline action on so like you kind of like change the di the power dynamic in the situation right instead of it just being like within the kids they're adults so i feel like in a way it's sort of easier you're not actually fixing the issue when like you're going with disciplinary acts for it you know because it's like the only reason in that the the incentive for the bullies to not go and do the bullying is because they're being given um a punishment for it that is based in, so 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 um if they then find themselves in a situation where they're not going to get that punishment they're still going to want to do the actions like you didn't get rid of them wanting to do the actions based on it the only reason it, it, they would not be doing it if they're not doing it if it's based in the fact that they would get disciplinary action then like it's in a way it's like by looking at it as like the schools are like the big bully you know being like okay kids you must act in ways you know what i mean there does that like make sense i think so um like i do feel like i like i feel like i understand what i'm saying but am i communicating it in the way that fully accurately represents it i'm not sure i'm sure i can be better with that um so then like we grow up but we we grow up still like with those desires were those were those motivating factors behind our power plays did they really change at all or is all that's changing is that we grew up and now we have a bit more of a physical ability to do stuff maybe it's maybe it's that we have a greater physical ability to do stuff maybe it's the fact that um emotionally we didn't regulate in a way to the point where our fuse is maybe a bit shorter i don't know there are different ideas in there i guess that is something i could look up i could just look up um like it doesn't just have to be within bullying but that's just like human uh, uh, like yeah it's psychology stuff um fourth one can you like please score that'd be really great if like they could come in and score Let's have Pal Pepper see what he gets. That's gonna be off there. Alas, he's off target. Some good but yeah, you do see like I'm pretty sure I hear it funny of like the idea of oh the kid who was bullied, they grow up and then and then it's like it's my turn, bitches, like revenge of the nerd shit, you know? 
um, get rid of that. Because you learn that in situations that the power play is the p how power dynamics work and it's like you were on the receiving end of it in one way so then when you grow up you're like well this is what works so that that's what you do and you're looking for other people to do it to and it's like that's kind of <laughs> like a, it's a continuous thing and it's like well how do you stop all of that and it's like you just get like how do you get rid of power dynamic where it's like um oh wait how did i get all the way to that oh i got all the way to that because i was talking about a podcast that was mentioning bullying and like how it was um where it's like maybe like friends who use phys who use like trying to shame each other with stuff with words that they say and stuff that's also an interesting thing as well is that we look at like words and we say that they're bad right but and then it's like don't say that word but it's like okay so let's say you stop saying that word all that's going to ha you if you it's it's like you're solving the wrong problem if you're solving the surface level problem where it's like you think of like derogatory terms that people use against each other to insult each other right the problem isn't that they're using the word it's that they're trying to insult each other you know that you know like if you have a problem with that it's not the word itself because the words mean nothing the words are just sounds you know like if we start saying the word um uh just let's just think of the word uh juggle like juggle at sense in terms of how we think of it might mean you're just throwing some balls around or something but if you just be like huh, you stupid juggle you're a juggle you juggle 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 and then you keep using that in like a insulting way like the context behind saying it suddenly it's going to become like a word that's used to demean people right like constant use of it in terms of the way that we use it and then eventually you might have people say don't use the word juggle it hurts people's feelings and stuff right so maybe then you start stop using the word juggle then you move on to the word cookie and then you just keep saying cookie that replaced juggle you didn't actually solve the problem you just switched the words it's just in a different cycle it's like i think we have to understand if there are things that we actually have problems with are we fixing surface level problems which is all which is mostly what we're going to do because it's a lot easier they're easier to see so if you're like solving a surface level problem short term you're like we solved the short term problem fantastic but long term the desire to use words and use actions in those ways that never actually stop and never change managed to get out despite the tackle has it looked down there gary the hawks have got to change it up because they're a bit too predictable at the moment okay then meek the winner there oh Hawthorne at least got a goal that's good i'm here over here talking about things and i i feel like i'm representing it okay at the moment i feel like it's definitely my best day representing like ideas in my head um since i started so i'm happy with that for now because it's like i feel good <laughs> yeah good looking kick pow pepper yeah so we go in there because yeah i was mentioning like the words as an example where it's like words that we say that are like bad into like like curse words so like a fuck you know they really don't mean anything it's just like our representation on them i feel like i probably explained that and i don't need to go deeper in that because i feel like my because i do have this feeling where i'm not completely done with what i was just talking about but um i'll get rid of that but i sort of explained the if you just switch around words it just keeps going on i already talked about that so i feel like i would just be repeating myself so where was something that i didn't feel like i was finished with that it might have been in the physical sense potentially um i'll get rid of that okay get the kick in there very nice oh last set he um no oh, that was such a it was such a good game it was i don't know it was like a few days ago it was i think it was poor it was richmond and poor adelaide last set had a kick that was he had a very big moment in that game okay then so you go with fourth one um got mr bergman and dixon 
Dixon had his name written all over. It's also interesting to think about for me is that we'll, we'll find situations in terms of we're saying, hey, we need to fix this. This is a problem over here. And this is a problem over here. But then what are we actually complaining about? Are we actually complaining about the things that are happening in terms of the actions? Or are we just complaining about who it's benefiting, who is who is the one on the receiving end of it? Because maybe you can fix a problem. It's like you I feel like it's seen quite often. Okay, the key example would be like someone who says like uh, a dictator is bad and like a king is bad back in like, I don't know, the 15, 1600s. So then maybe they stage a coup, a coup and then take over, and then they become that same dictator king thing that people then hate. So it's like, yes, you're complaining that this thing is bad, um, and then you put up a stand against it, but then you just became it. So really, all you had a problem with was that it wasn't you. It wasn't what you, like, it wasn't benefiting you and what you wanted, you know? That's something I also think about in terms of when I look at um, situations that I think are maybe good or bad or anyone else, is my reason or anyone else's reason based on, oh, we actually think this thing is bad or is it that this thing is this thing is good or bad or is it just good and is it is that reason based on the action or is it based on who is benefiting? From it. You know what I mean there? Okay, we go there. It's almost worth a kick. Rosie, the power at doing all the attacking. Scrimshaw is like the rock of Gibraltar. Kicks to center wing. Butters. Oh, so we got a little, we just got a replay of the game I just came from, which sucks. But as long as I'm talking, I'm finding, I'm having interest in what I'm talking about. It'll all be good. Give it a chance. That was a promising build up and deserved a better finish. But I don't know where to go from there. Ow, ow, ow. My collarbones. My collarbones. I've always been bad with the collarbones. My collarbone strength has always been terrible. Um, there you go. Oh, he's missed that. An ugly looking scoreboard should probably be even uglier. Okay, that's with port. Kick it in. Who you got? No, get rid of it. The Hawks under great pressure. Hardwick. And now, ah, okay, that's good. Scrimshaw. Mr. Scrimshaw, you get the handballs over there. Um, they cannot keep him quiet. Okay, fantastic. I do have an interest. I do have somewhat of an interest. Um, like I never really know much about Australian stuff. Just in gents, like in terms of like purely Australian. I guess like the only thing that's like sort of been big or whatever um, has been like. So in Australia, we got the voice to parliament thing coming up vote which is what i think i don't remember how long how far away it is um in terms of when the general public the the the, the, the peasants when the peasants vote <laughs> um they'll kick that way i don't know i don't know exactly like i do have some interest talking about it but i guess like the only thing I don't know. Like at the moment, I look at it and be like, I want. I just wonder, like, how long it will be until like Australia gets renamed. You know? Because in Australia, we have it where, um, especially with like Aboriginal round and stuff. There's there's always the um, acknowledgement of Aboriginal land and saying that it was originally like, um, just saying like it was originally Aboriginal name land, right? And then wanting to acknowledge those names. Like that Should happens, I'm like, okay, well, the term Australia wasn't Aboriginal, wasn't an Aboriginal term. So I'm just like curious, just like thinking about it. Because logically speaking, that's where it would ultimately head, that's where it would lead to, right? So I'm just like, how long until that happens? That's what I'm thinking in my head. I don't know exactly, but um, I feel like at some point that's going to happen. You got Lysette. And there you go. Oh, he's missed it. Oh well. It's amazing how goal kicking gets in people's heads sometimes. Mr. Jaff. Aggressive with the kick in. And we got Mr. Scrimshaw. There you go. Okay, so we got half time. That's unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunate score. It's a bit big. Um, but we will be back for the second half with Puerto Rico having a 52 point lead. Okay, wonderful. We are, we are back in. We got the second half. We were, oh, obviously, Hawthorne are going to come back and win, of course. Because that's going to happen. Um, oh, <laughs> no one got anything. 
A bit of friendly fire. Burn. Anyway, get the plots in here. Run and carry. I've lost um, today. I'll go with fourth one. I wonder where I could go that talking could from. Um, because I know like the last thing I mentioned was like just a curiosity in terms of like what happens to Australia's name in the future. But I was just trying to think of like where can I go to from um what was the last thing I talked about before that though? Um I was talking about not really being able to fix issues because you're fixing like the surface level problems. Okay, so I know for me, like one thing, I was talking about this a little bit yesterday, but um, as like I was on like a walk, I was on for a forced stream, um, part of it was like I tried to actively, because I'm in a situation where I'm looking at um, a thing where I'm like, okay, do I like go to, do I like reach out to people and like give like, and, and, like I'm in a, a situation where I'm like, okay, so I have this like thing where I was like, I'm looking to like apologize, right? And I'm just like thinking about it. like, I'm feeling bad about it. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe I want to apologize. This is just me without like going into detail on what it is. But I'm like, um, okay, so I'm like coming away from it saying, oh, I want to apologize. But then I think about it and go, okay, well, I understand that when it comes to like apologies, my understanding is we're never really apologizing to the other person for hurting their feelings. Because we don't ultimately, like, yes, we can have undecided ideas in terms of what the other person might be feeling. But the reason that we're apologizing just tends to come from the fact that we ourselves feel bad about um, something within the, in, about what's going on there. That makes us feel like if we just give, like, a little apology, everything can be fine. So it's like, I, like, I recognize, in my, like, I didn't say that, I didn't represent what I was thinking there. Playing for pride now. Uh, in, to the extent that I would have liked, but, um, um, like, I recognize that when it comes to me, like, wanting to apologize to another person, I'm like, how much am I actually looking to apologize to them? Because I, like, potentially hurt them, you know, that I, that they might have felt bad about the situation. How much of it's based on that, and how much of it's based on me feeling bad, you know? And I go from that, and, and be like, um... Dixon, maybe if He'll if I, since I know that I feel bad about the situation, Fantasia. maybe the person I need to apologize to isn't that other person, but in Bayers. fact is actually myself. Since I know that drill. I'm the We're person, like what if I actually talk to myself and give an apology step. to myself for the situation the and the way it made me feel? <laughs> no, um, perfect. And then see if that actually, see what, what that does. So I was on a walk, and part of it was hoping to be able to um, use that as a way to talk to myself and do this. But I was thinking about this, I think, potentially last night, um, definitely this morning, about how, while that can seem like a good idea, while I can seem like a good idea to apologize to myself, I was also seeing that it actually might be easier emotionally to go and apologize to, a, to, to another person rather than myself. And the reason that would be is that apologizing to another person for a situation, you're only apologizing for like, maybe like a, a, something that maybe lasts a short period of time. But maybe it was something that was over a day. Maybe it was something over a few days, a few months. Right? Where... Like, if I was apologized to a person for a situation, oh, he's a left footer, crap. Okay, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, where it's like, okay, so if I'm apologizing to someone for something that happened over a short time period, then that's all that I'm emotional. Then, then I am emotionally, um, putting closure or something, potentially. Yeah, I'm just thinking for the idea. On something that's very, sh that's very short term and... The whole brunt of the situation, the whole energy of the situation is not solely placed on me, the emotional weight of the situation. However, apologizing to myself, yes, I can apologize for a single situation, but there's a very good chance that because I am, in terms of the things that I have done that impact me is a lot, is a hell of a lot higher than anything that I would have done would impact other people, another individual person, um... The amount of things that, the amount of time and the depth that that apology is going to go to, it's actually going to feel like a lot more heavier. So it can actually be a lot harder because um, there's more to it than just a simple I'm sorry for this thing here. It becomes I'm sorry for this, which happened because of these other things. 
Like, you know what I mean there? It's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot more to it, talking to myself and putting, uh, and, 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 um, trying to put closure to a situation with myself. There's a lot more to it. So, this is more, because there's a lot more to it, it becomes a lot heavier, it's a lot harder. Um, while at the same time, it can actually feel like that's probably the right thing to do. But because it's harder to do, it's making me say, that's not the thing I want to do. I'd rather go and apologize to this other person because maybe it's actually, it's more surface level apology in terms of the amount of weight that actually goes to it. It doesn't feel as heavy to actually have to do that. Um, I don't have to share the full emotional weight of the situation. I am placing some of it onto this other person. I think that is part of it. That is something I'm thinking about. So I'm not even entirely sure what I'm going to do about the situation. But the idea of talking to myself, whether it's something where I'm apologizing, or maybe it's even something where a situation could come up and I'm like, maybe complimenting myself. Just doing something like that. It's almost like a self-report, right? Um, I feel like there could actually be value to that. Because if you're, com if you're like, if you're doing that consistently, like, the idea of why it would feel hard to do at the moment is because it's, it's not something that's done overly consistently. Like, yes, I can think about myself, but actually talking to myself as if I am a different person, and that is the interaction I'm having, I've never really done that. Um, okay, um, so, what ultimately it ends up doing is that it makes it feel harder to do because it's not something I'm as used to, but if it was something that was built up over time, and it was done more regularly, then it would, be, then it would seem fine. Then it would just be something you're doing. The kicks astray and out of bounds. Lots to analyse, Gaz. What stands out? The power might be in front, but there's room for improvement with their kicking. They've been sloppy at times. Wines. But that does put up an interesting idea into me. How do we like apologise to? Do we ever apologise to another person or the other? Well, this kind of comes to just in terms of actions that we do. Because I am the, the believer that ultimately, just because of the way that we interact with the world, it makes it that we can't actually apologise to another person based on themselves, or we can't do something for another person or anything of like that. Just because the way that we interact with the world, that we look at things through our eyes and all that stuff. Um, it makes it impossible. But how do we give? I'm just trying to think. How, like, I feel like it's easy to. Uh, what's like a deep apology to another person? I don't know if I have like a lot to mention on that right now, but kind of on my mind a bit. How do we? How does a person give an apology to another person that isn't just solely based on the fact that you feel bad, that you're being viewed negatively, so you're just trying to rectify that with a surface level apology. For them to say, for you to say, I'm sorry, and then they'd be like, that's okay, and then like, you're off the hook for it, you know? Because it's like, yes, we apologize for a lot of stuff, but then we just like repeat the same actions because we weren't actually sorry that we did the actions. We were just... We just realized that by doing the actions, it caused an outcome that maybe wasn't what we were looking for. So we're just trying to like get that surface level little apology, try and get off the hook for it. So then we don't actually have to put in the effort to change. You know? Okay, let's see if Scotty Lysette can get this one. How many has he got so far? I don't know. That's a goal. There you go, baby. Okay, cool. You're saying like if someone made a promise to someone and didn't keep that promise? I was about to ask what were you talking about? What did that have to connect to? But that was because like my mind was so wiped, ready to look for like something else to talk about. <laughs> Um, so like what, that was being based on the apology? Like I suppose like if you made a promise to someone and didn't keep it, like I guess that could be an example of like a thing someone could apologize for. But like, it, I, it, I don't know that the example really matters all that much. Hurry, kick goes very um, wide. Coming over here. Should be able to get them out of trouble. They've turned it over. 
moving the footy laterally. Okay, like I guess in the example of like promises, like the idea would be like, oh, you had a promise you made to someone, then you didn't keep it. Like, and then it's like, oh, maybe you feel like you need to apologize, but are you going to apologize because you're actually sorry that you didn't keep a promise and then are going to work to like make sure that you always keep promises? Or are you just sorry that the situation has come up in which maybe you got caught not keeping the promise? Maybe it's just like, oh, I'm going to get caught. So you make a little apology, then you're, what you're looking for, like, here's an interesting thing, like, what happens to someone if they go to, like, have an apology, and then they go to give an apology, but then the other person doesn't accept it, like, that's a thing as well, because I feel like if we give apologies, if we see, like, people giving apologies, like, do we, like, and then what happens, like, if the other person's like, you know what, no, I don't accept your apology, I acknowledge that you gave it, but I'm not going to accept it, I actually think that's completely fair game. Um, because I feel like it's very, uh, I do feel like, like, when we see people giving apologies, we look at the other person who's receiving that apology as, like, um, are you going to just, like, accept it? Are you going to say, okay? Like, almost like there's an entitlement to it. Um, when I definitely do think that if someone gives you an apology, you ha you give that other person no right to ultimately accept that apology, but you can acknowledge it, you can acknowledge that it was made, but there's, I definitely don't think there's, that you have to um, accept it. You can say, you know what, yep, you did this thing, uh, it hurt me, and um, yep, that's it, you hurt me, and I don't accept that, I don't forgive you on anything. You think most people are sorry for letting that person down, and you don't think they are sorry for the action? Right, because it's like, in that situation, it would be like, oh, well, are they even sorry that they let that person down, or are they just sorry that the reflection on themselves is that they are someone who lets people down or stuff? Like, it's not even, like, necessarily that, um, because it's like, when it comes to the action part of it, if you're not sorry for the action, that's not actually what you're apologizing for, ultimately, like, deep down inside, then you're probably just going to repeat the action. If you're apologi- like, I don't know if people are, like, actually sorry for letting other people down because they let other people down because the other people feel bad as much as it's the reflection of making other people feel bad makes me look like a bad person for whatever it is it makes people view me negatively so i'm trying to like apologize but then that we are like then trying to apologize to make sure that people are like that's okay that you did the stuff come over here same because if they didn't get hurt then you don't think they would be saying sorry if they didn't get hurt but there's also like the idea to apologize because like in in terms of it's like i hear the idea of like oh well that person got hurt so i'm saying sorry because the because the outcome of the situation rather than the actions like i am like i do feel like i understand that but ultimately when it comes because like we could end up apologizing to people when we don't even know what the person's ultimately feeling which technically we never actually know we're just always like projecting ideas onto other people so it's ah like i tend to find it's just like the reason we're doing it is because we feel uncomfortable about something and we feel like um come get rid of it with a big fist got the handball away not good footy there Okay, yeah, there we go. We got Mr. Hawthorne's little kick in there. No. Okay, Mr. Houston. He might have thought about the corridor. Burton will tidy up. Hmm. Goes long. I guess there is always a like. There is also like an interesting idea. I don't know if this. It doesn't necessarily have to just fully connect to apologies, but like there would be a difference in terms of like the situation in which you're in, in which it happened so did it happen like something that was like a face-to-face -face thing so like do you have to like literally look at the person's face do you have to hear their voice how much it, like what's the interaction is it an interaction in which maybe um it's just based on text so because so, like the idea of like if it's something because i know like people can say like um Ball spills free in the tackle. Okay, we gotta, we gotta get Bo, rid of. Oh, there you go. Get the handballs out there. It's no like if someone's saying something or anything that um may or or like have the perception eventually, where it's like, oh, you hurt people's feelings or whatever. But if it was got in like text form, you're probably gonna feel like a lot less uh, accountability or like responsibility to like give an apology. You're gonna feel it a lot less because maybe you don't like you don't see the other like the fa the physical cues. You don't feel, you don't, you don't see, like, the verbal cues, um, wait, no, not that way, I meant the other way, I meant, like, some, uh, what did I mean? 
What am I trying to say? But his kick is astray. A fine passage of play. I don't know if it needs to get. Mm. Danger here. I don't know if it really needs to. Uh, what would it be? Because it, because because like yeah, it's like people say like a lot meaner stuff when they have like um greater anonymity. That makes sense. Like there's 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 less um potential um finishing strongly. Newcomb should have uh. Um, can take some time and find so it would be like people option. say things Clears like it's easier for people to say things Hallelujah. that hurt um, runs onto when they are anonymous when um, when they don't have to look the someone in the face when they're just the like behind a keyboard Set. like stuff like Good that um, I guess in a way like interesting because it's like oh this person would never say that stuff to my face in like different situations but sure also, it, it's interesting that. in terms of like, well, if that's What's true, maybe here? like Rosie. them saying like harsher things might actually mean that they mean it more if they have more anonymity because they don't have to face like, because they have less chance of having to face the negative repercussions of what they may have to say. So they feel more comfortable actually letting out what they actually think and what they feel. They're hungry for more. Reeves, Boak has it now on center wing. What you're saying, like Amos. if you know that person and you do something Lewis. you know would hurt Four them, you're saying and some people like say sorry just because here. they know what they did was Marks wrong. Well, if they know what they did was wrong, they wouldn't Bergman do it. Wins it back. If they actually Boak thought it was wrong, they wouldn't do it. Um, like the reason they did it is because they thought it was good. He stopped in his track. But, um, but I know that wasn't exactly what you were saying. Um, oh, okay, come on. Is calm in a crisis. It's a tough like I actually think if like someone gives you an apology, um, is to not like automatically accept it and actually just watch their actions in terms of the next history. And maybe I don't know how long you would have to wait, whether it's like a week, a month, or something. Just just until like it dies down enough to see then how they act and if they repeat it. Because then it's like if they repeat it, then you know that they never actually were apologizing for actually causing the action or even hurting you necessarily. Needs to get this one bending, but oh. They've got to start making these opportunities count. Away he goes. Yeah. Wait, goes your example there of like saying, um, you, if you know the person and you do something you know would hurt them. Like if you do something that you know would hurt someone, then... Like if you do something you know would hurt someone, then like you're not really sorry for hurting them because if you because if you go ahead of time and say well I if you can never know that you would know something would hurt someone because it's always based on because if it's done preemptively the only way to know someone's got hurt is is post something happening not before you can't actually know that um, but if you're like looking at a situation and you're like oh I think this thing's going to hurt a person and you do it anyway then you're actually not sorry for hurting the person because you intentionally made a decision with the intention of that ultimately happening. The Hawks a shot. What a debacle it's been. Will the umpire pluck a free kick? More. Not sure who that's You're saying not all the time some people do things just because at the moment they wanted to like peeing. In the middle, Morrison. I'm trying to like exactly work out where in the path of conversation we're at at the moment. Because I've probably mentioned like multiple different things. So I'm just trying to work out what path exactly that's connecting to. Um, that's a strong mark. He's generally a good kick. Wines. Get rid of this one. Burton. Get the kicks down there. Just waiting for the right moment. That's going to be with Mr. Nash. Nash read it well on center wing and can pump them back into attack. Um. He doesn't want go over here any, like there's a temptation in me to talk about the, the cheating Hawks example exactly but that wasn't Durban. because the cheating is an example and like if i was to like go and like mention that from the point that we're at i feel like that down. wouldn't be like going deeper in terms of what i'm talking no, about it would be today. going like surface level because it's going based on an exact Inspired. example Can rather than it's like this yeah. is something I, yeah uh, um but there is a temptation just being like oh cheating let's talk about cheating and stuff and like Oh, and like where that would come from. Oh. But I also don't know. Come over here. Who's that, Mr. Moore? Get your kicks. So you got a goal. Thank you. Could be relieved to have converted that one after a couple of misses, no doubt. Underway once more. Finlayson. You're saying some people wait, you said some people do things just because at the moment they wanted to like 
Okay. Well, the thing of in terms of like the actions that we do is that every single action we do is because in the moment we want to. For whatever reason we have, like well, it doesn't matter who you are or how much time you spend thinking about a thing prior to the action. It always works in the same way. It's always lights, camera, action. The emotional, what you are emotionally desiring. Um, your analysis of the situation in terms of what you want, of how to do things, and then the ultimate action. It doesn't matter how much thought is put into it, in terms of how, how often it's happened. It's always the same process for everyone. So yeah, in terms of like saying like, because at the moment, someone wanted to do something, it's like, well, yeah, but like, everyone in all the moments when we're doing things, wanted to do that thing. Based on their analysis of the situation, it told them that that was the thing to do, and then they acted on it. Come out this way. Whether it's, whether they spent 5 milliseconds, or... 50 hours. What's he got always the same process. Lysette. Couldn't quite. Come on, fourth one. Gets back. Mr. Port. Ow. In the right spot at the right time. Farrell gathers. Not good off the boot. Like I find something interesting. If if people if we had like apologies and it was if we were in situations in which it's oh you're going to do something where people think you're amazing. If, if if we were in situations and being like, okay, here's the thing, you're going to do this thing, I'm not telling you what it is, that's completely irrelevant. Um, away from it, you, people will look at you and say you're amazing, however, you're going to hurt some people along the way. Some people will be upset by it, but everyone will think you're incredible. Um, are you going to apologize? The amount of people, it's like, yes, you might find someone who's like, oh, well, I'm going to apologize. Um, but in terms of like the general person, it's a high if, you, if they were actually in a situation where people were like, oh, you're not going to be viewed negatively for something. Um, <laughs> like, you know, the amount of times, the amount of apologies around the world would go down so dramatically. Okay, but that's the end of this game. Not a close one, again, unfortunately. But let's see what we had in terms of. We had Mr. Rioli, he had the most goals. Oh, Jai Newcomb had the at the disposals, he got over 40. And it was, oh, it was Scrimshaw at top, that's interesting. But, mostly it's Port players here. Okay, so, it was Port LA who got the win on this game. Uh, they had three goals from Junior Rioli, and uh, it was it was Miles Bergman leading the way for Port Adelaide with the 38 touches. And they get on top of Hawthorne by 73 points, 93 to 20.